Sumerian gods. So they believe On was pregnant with Adam and gave birth to Adam, and then that was a white man. And the reason why they have strength is because we, God's people, serve other gods, and they feed off fear like in a horror movie. So when they appear, they're going to eat everybody. He said, I, well, I asked him, I said, well, when they appear, they're going to eat you? He was like, no, nah, because I don't eat flesh. I'm a vegan. <laughs> can't make it up, man. I promise you can't. Oh, that's just what they believe, man. He just hate the word. All praise, esteem, and honor to Abba and Shaman, in the name of Yahoo Shah Hamashiach. John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures for any of you think you have eternal life, and there they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Allah in you. I come by Abba's name, you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and not the honor that come from Allah only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Abba. There's one that accused you, even Moses, of whom you trust. Had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my words? All esteem and praise to Abba and Shammayim in the name of Yahu Hamashiach. Hold on, because that nigga, uh, now I see how they do it now when that don't be buffered. It run the line at the top versus when they used to give verbiage. Proverbs 24 and 1. Be, you envi be not you envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them for their hearts study destruction and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is a house building and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall your chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man strong, yea, a man of knowledge, increased strength. For by wise counsel shall you make war in a multitude of counselors' safety. Come on, drop down to verse 27 for me, man. Shalom, Brother Marvin, man. Prepare your work without and make it fit for yourself in the field and afterwards build your house. Uh-huh, Psalms 127 and 1. Except you who will build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except you who will keep the city, the watchmen wake in vain. Mm -hmm. Vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, so he give his beloved sleep. Uh, what is it? What? What is it, Matthew? Come on, get to Matthew real quick. Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Shalom, Brother Marcus. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Mm -hmm. But lay up for yourselves treasure in Shamahim where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Oh, uh, where your treasure is, well, we have to deal with three things because we just started three things. We started with building of the house. We started with the rule of the house. We got to talk about the order of the house. We got to talk about how a wise man is made strong. All those things have to be completed. We went to read. We starting right here because, you know, he say in the innermost place are the riches. I want you to hear James chapter two and verse one. Remember what we read already in Proverbs 23. He say labor not to be rich cease from your own wisdom and that. The book of Proverbs say wisdom or skill gives you durable riches. Now, of course, you know, through also through wisdom is a house building. Now, there's an aspect of the building of the house. We got to talk about that, too. We have to look at the aspect of the construction of the house with Solomon and even the repairing of the house in Second Kings 12. I think we talked about certain job titles yesterday. You know what I'm talking about? And some of those things can be made manifest when we look at 2 Kings 12 because it's skill. See, I'm going to tell you something, man, just to be dead honest with you. And, of course, we read it last night at Timothy where he said if a man is to be a pastor, an overseer, he cannot be a novice. That means he can't be new. And then he also said that he must be apt to teach or he must be skilled. Unfortunately, when it comes to the word of Yahuwah, I think that most people do not understand that this is a craft. It is a skill. It is a skill that you are taught and learned in. You know what I'm saying? It's not just something that you just pop up and know how to do one day. It's not something that, oh, it's this is not a, a, a DIY project. It's not. You know what I'm saying? How many, how many of y'all in your lifetime 
people pretty much told you you could just study the word for yourself and you, and you'll just understand it on your own. And how did that benefit you when you did it? And you know why it didn't benefit any of us when we did it? Because you didn't have the proper skill. Remember when the Ethiopian eunuch, shalom, brother, is man. Remember when uh the Ethiopian eunuch got wanted to get baptized when Philip came up on him? He said, How can I understand it except a man guide me? Now, see, we've talked about this for years. There's a difference. Are you to seek out the book of Yahuwah and read? Absolutely. Now, what it's saying in Isaiah 34 and 16, go ahead and read it for him. Say, just they think I'm making it up. Seek you out of the book of Yahuwah and read. Do what? Seek you out the book of Yahuwah and read. So this is not a, this is not, these statements previous is not statements that say that you shouldn't read the book for yourself. Now is it? That's what he told you to do. See, read it again. Seek you out of the book of Yahuwah and read. Why, what else, sir? No one of these shall fail. None Nothing. shall want That man read. say none of that word going to fail. Now let's look at another statement he made in Revelation 1 and 1 when he say blessed is the man that read. But then he also put a caveat with that read. See, a lot of people read, but they don't do the other half of what he about to say. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Yahushua HaMashiach, which Elohim gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his Malachim unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of Elohim and of the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach and of all things that he saw. Baruch is he that reads. Baruch is he that what? That reads. And what else? They that hear the words of this prophecy. And do what? Keep those things which are written there. He said that you're on guard them. See, it's not just good enough to read it. You got to guard it. See, I told you, see, last night when you heard me going off on that dude, when he was like, well, tell me what the mark of the beast is. See, he thought I was playing when I told him something. Give me, get what this is, man. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Is it Matthew chapter 5? Let me make sure. I don't want you on no wild goose chase. I don't want you on no wild goose chase. I want to say it's a Matthew chapter 5. I mean, y'all know what I'm finna say because I think you heard me say it last night, but we're going to read it off this page, though. Yeah, come on, Matthew 7 and 6. <clears throat> come on, Sib. I look right past. It. Give not that which is Kadash unto the dogs. Do not, do, don't do what? Give that which is Kadash unto the dog. Neither cast your pearls before swine. Lest they trample them under their feet. And, and turn again. And rend you. Now tell them what Kadash and dogs is. See, I told them that. I know what a dog is. Some people tell you that's a Gentile, but that's not a Gentile here, man. That man don't give that which is Kadash to dogs. Kadash is a gills. That's the most Kadash thing, a saint. You say don't give him the most sanctified thing. Don't give it to a dog. What is a dog? Kuon, that's a dog or a man of an impure mind, an I'm, impudent man. You know what an impudent man is? That's a proud, hard-headed, stubborn man. He said, that man mind impure, don't give him the most holy things. You know, your, you know the book tell you that. Don't answer a fool according to his father. I'm not giving you that. Didn't your law tell you if a man was unclean, he couldn't partake in the, in the, in the Kadash things, man? Could you eat the Passover if you was unclean? Could you eat the shoe bread if you was unclean? So why am I going to give you the most holy things and your mind unclean? I'm not doing that. The law tell me not to do that. Now tell them what a pearl is, man. Swine is self-explanatory, but we can hear it anyway. A pearl is margaritas. That's a pearl or a proverb, a, a word of great value. A, wor a proverb, a word of great value. We'll read Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 in a second, but tell them what swine is. It's koi rolls, a swine. You're unclean. Something that's abominable. You don't give Proverbs to the abominable. Proverbs 12 and 9. I mean, Ecclesiastes 12 and 9. I'm sorry. Ecclesiastes 12 and 9. And moreover, because a preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. What else he yeah, did? He gave good heed and sought out, set in order many proverbs. Many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written upright, words of truth, the words of the wise as goads, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, 
are given from one shepherd. One shepherd. And further, by these my son be admonished of making many books, no end. Matthew, what, 13 and verse 9. Then I'm going to get back on point. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speak you unto them in parables? Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to the mysteries of the kingdom of Shalom, but to them it is not given. For whosoever shall be given, he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not from him shall be taken away even that he had. Remember I tell you in Psalm 78, he said, I speak to them in Proverbs. Ain't that what it said? What is a proverb? How do you even get a proverb? One and one. Proverbs. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Yashroth. To know wisdom and instruction. To know what? Wisdom and instruction. What is instruction again? That's Musa. Remember to be rebuked, that's to be checked, that's to be corrected, that's to be instructed. Remember, correction is supposed to be for the cause of instruction. Not just for the cause of whooping somebody, chiding somebody, they're supposed to learn. Chastisement or correction without instruction is just straight up sadistic and cruel. It serves no purpose. You know what I'm saying? Just to be dead honest with you. If you chastise and there's no instruction attached to your chastisement, then you need to sit back and pause and say, why am I yelling at this child? Why am I about to strike this child? If there's nothing they finna learn from this other than when I get upset, I hit them. You know what I'm saying? Like dead serious. Now, if that, that now if your hitting got some instruction along with it, I ain't got nothing to say because you who told it, I'm going to give you a third of you to the famine, a third of you to the sword, a third of you to the pestilence, and you going to learn not to size me. Come on with me. To, to know wisdom and instructions, to perceive the words of understanding, mm -hmm. to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, mm -hmm. to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. You know, you know what it means to be simple in this book? It means to be open-minded and naive. A lot of people tell you to be open-minded. Open-minded, how you devil going to have you in a weevil lock, how you right in the book. You know, you got to read open mind. Look here, right? I can listen to dudes talk about gods and other things that I don't believe in because I already was learning that stuff before I got in the word. But boy, if you're, I'm trying to tell you, boy, well, if your faith is not rock solid, I would not advise you to pay attention, seek out, or read nothing. But boy, you're going to be out here rubbing on crystals, butt naked with underarm hair. You know what I'm talking about? Straight like that. That won't happen to you. You're going to be around here talking about you getting your chakras in line and all this old other stuff. Dead serious, boy. Because I'm trying to tell you. See, these people be screaming. See, that the, the, the Hebrews, they took this from these people. See, this is the thing with the book of Yahuwah compared to these other books and a lot of people mind. A lot of people mind believe these ancient civilizations, these people just wrote their own books and wrote their own God. A lot of them don't believe that Yahuwah is the almighty creator of heaven and earth. You know what I'm talking about? Worthy to be worshipped, honored, praised, and feared by all who uh, who are under his heaven. They think that he's a construct of man or like Buddy be saying he from Enlil and they aliens because they say these books came before the Bible. But see, I've explained something to you before. We're not going to read it. I'm going to give you the short version and I'm going to go about my business. Now, y'all already know from Seth and Enos that the name of Yahuwah was being called upon in the earth. You know that uh, Cain knew Yahuwah. But clearly he was of the wicked one because he committed murder and was full of jealousy and covetous and went in a different direction. We know that the whole world was corrupt during the time of Noah. We know that these people were worshiping all manner of gods and all manner of things. Now, I said that for a reason, because we read in the book of Job. Job knew who Adam was, didn't he? Job knew about a lot of things. See, somebody coming to us, though. Uh, If individuals don't really don't really understand is that the unclean spirits didn't have a great day understanding of everything that was gonna happen. Look at him coming in here cheesing. Look at that time. <laughs> nigga just nigga just felt that nigga say he heard naps popping cheese sizzling. You knew it was you. You the only nigga in here coming here with a USA shirt on. You proud to be in America, where at least you know you're free. Mm. That nigga came in here with a uh, 
Well, how you just did that? I don't think nobody want to shake your hand after that. <laughs> No, no, you got a minute to change it? I am. Right now. <laughs> right now. But nigga, you late. Don't use it. Don't use your wife as an excuse. <laughs> don't use your wife as an excuse. You could have pulled up and took took you some bread. Now you got to, you ain't even unclean. Now you can't get none. Or no wine. You a day late in the dollar show, baby. He must have been unworthy all that fart he's been doing in life. <laughs> <laughs> Just been lying all year. <laughs> Everybody know it. You know what I'm talking about? Shoot. Shoot. That boy, he said he was out the house celebrating. I didn't see he got an extra booty to wipe. <laughs> Good times. Who you left the boy with? Mm, shoot, that sounds like you lied. <laughs> Nigga left him with his daddy. He put it on his mom. But listen, one thing that a lot of people neglect to understand is, is that Satan don't, all the angels didn't know the gospel of Mashiach to a T, but what do we read in Daniel chapter 8 that the man of sin to have understanding of? So why in the hell wouldn't the devil have it and then the devil the one giving him his power? So that means that when it comes to certain things, Satan already know the play. So he influencing these people plus the word of Yahuwah was already preached in the earth nobody wants to sit back and think ain't nobody the Hebrews didn't take from these people these people were corrupting the word of Yahuwah just because you didn't have a bible or some Israelites you thought that the word of Yahuwah started on Mount Sinai like an idiot because that's how many people feel about the word of Yahuwah they believe it didn't start till Sinai that's how people move so they ain't write a book till then. Man, the, the book of Yahuwah was only written for records for the house of Yashiro. Like I told a dude the other day, Genesis is in there because those people had no idea about the beginning. They didn't know about the beginning of creation. They didn't know about Adam. They probably didn't know about the flood. They didn't know about Abraham. They didn't know about Isaac. They didn't know about Jacob. Because when you look at Genesis, once you get past Noah, who is it about? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And how they got to Egypt. When you strip away pretty much uh, the first 21 chapters, because Genesis is 50 chapters long. When you strip away, I didn't even want to say, when you start to get to probably the chapter 15, even though Abraham is really mentioned in starting in chapter 12, when you really go to 12 to 50, that's all the things that pertain directly to the Israelites. When you look at chapter one, creation. Chapter two, creation. Bro, you know people really believe that Genesis 1 is a different creation than Genesis 2. You know niggas think it's three different atoms? See, he said male and female created he them. Then it's the same person, you doofus. What's wrong with you? So smart, you dumb. But they have to realize, boy, you who are scrambling your mind like some good eggs on a Sunday morning, boy. With a side of coffee and light toast. And you'll be thinking you smart. You look at chapter three, it's what went down in the garden. You look at chapter four, it's how, how what, what Abel and Cain had going on to get you to sell. Chapter five is the genealogy of Adam. Chapter six is why he had to flood the earth. And seven, eight, and nine is all dealing with Noah. You know what I'm talking about? Ten is the, the, the people who came out of Noah and his offspring. Eleven, when they tried to do the Tower of Babel, they start running down genealogy telling you about Abraham, and he start talking about Abraham after that. That's it. That's what it's about. That's 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 a that's a, a particular people specific. So of course it would be necessary for them to have that because you tied to these three men. And I want you to understand how you became tied to these three men. That's it. Ain't no deeper than that. That's why when a dude get up there tomorrow, well, what about Ishmael? What about it? You know what's funny that people talk about Ishmael with Abraham's son and niggas know their daddy had other kids cross town you never met. Why is this a foreign concept to you? Your daddy got kids from three, four different women. You ain't never sat back and thought, but you the one he raised. You ain't never thought you had to break bread with what he left with you to him. Now, that might not be everybody's story, but we know some people who that's their story. Daddy had two, three kids. He had one kid he took care of. The children of the concubines, for, for lack of a better term, he didn't really do too much for. He shot him a little 
your son and let them be. That's what Abraham did. He gave gifts to all his sons, but he gave everything he had to Isaac, though. See how that sounds like what, he, what, what, what the father did with Yahushua? He gave gifts to all his sons. Because remember, he took captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. But he gave everything he had to Yahushua. He gave everything to his son. That's what he did. Ain't that what he did? Okay, come on. Say, where we at? Proverbs 1 and 4. Come on with it. Say, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Tell him what discretion is, man. Some people don't know what it means to be discreet. A lot of a lot of people just want to be raggedy hoes and dogs in the street. That's mesama. That's purpose, discretion, device, or plot. So that means so that's how you learn how to move. He said they can't believe the father had a favorite whom he beloved. You ain't lying, dear. They can't believe it. You know what? I've been told y'all that. If anybody who got a bunch of children tell you they ain't got a favorite, they lying to you. They may not want to say it out loud, but you got one. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Sure. Joanne, she the first. I ain't got a lot of time with the boy yet. It could change. Yeah. Yeah. We got more time with him. You know what I'm saying? You might that's not to say you don't love all your kids. So okay, you got people who got to got a child, might not even be the firstborn. They they favorite because they take after their interests. The things that you do, he like to do. That's your your favorite, you know what I'm saying? One of them can be your favorite just because he looked like grandma such and such, he looked like uncle such and such, and you had a special affinity for this person. I mean, you're human by somebody gonna call you a bad person when every human being on earth is like this. Now, I said it don't mean you don't love you. See, it's different if you be like, I love him, I don't love him. We read in the book, Joseph loved. He loved Joseph. Jacob loved Joseph over all his sons. Did he treat his sons any different? No. You know why he loved Joseph so much? Because he loved his mom. You know what I'm talking about? And that's just what that is. It isn't that he hated Judah or he hated Reuben or he hated Simeon, but the love he going to have for the first child that the woman who he loved gave him is going to be drastically different. He's a human being. I, I don't know where people get this stuff from, man. I guess it's the internet, man. You, you expecting human beings not to be human. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is wrong with you? Your firstborn son, you be like, this here shoe. And, and if he looked like you, you might be like, what shoe? Yeah, that nigga, yeah, that, that's, that's me, though. I'm rolling with that one. You know what I'm saying? You know, it is what it is. You, that, you just don't, people just don't like to say it out loud. You feel like people going to judge you. You know why you feel like people going to judge you? Because you give a damn what other people think. I don't. You're going like, to say your, that was your favorite. Because I just said it. What you gonna do? Lock me up for it? Then walk over and say, You're a bad parent. So what? If I'm so bad, you take this nigga and feed him then. You know what I'm talking about? You take care of him. When he wake up in the middle of the night because he done pissed in the bed, you change the sheets. See if he used to pee in the bed. You had a bladder problem. Plead the fifth, man. Mm, that boy say he plead the fifth. That's an admission of guilt in this courtroom. You used to pee in the bed. I don't know. Hell, I don't know. Hell. Some people, some people got up and went to the bathroom. As a child, small child, small child, you a small child, you had a pull up on. That don't count if it don't hit the sheets. Hey, <laughs> listen. If you got some absorbency in your undergarments in that bed, that don't count. At that point, all the babies peeing in the bed. I was like, all babies It don't count. You got a diaper on. If the urine don't hit the sheet, you ain't peeing in the bed. You peeing in the diaper. You pee on the bed. You know what I'm saying? The only way that's going to happen is if you peed a lot. See, Joanne peed a lot. Huh? You know what I'm talking about? She drank a lot of water. She might be the only toddler I ever seen drink that much water. No one drink that much water. Now Joanne prefer water. She asked for it. I'm just not accustomed to that. I ain't seen that too often. I mean, back in the day they had no choice. 
It wasn't no juicy juice. Mm. <laughs> but your mama was giving you check sodas, man. Maybe not mom, maybe auntie cousin. That was fun as you grow. Sibby, they ain't get Sibby no sodas. Come on. Because he got tall. What are we talking about? <laughs> Shoot, clearly. You know, verse five. They ain't giving no coffee or no soda. That's what they say. That caffeine stunts your growth. That's what the old people say. I don't know if it's true. Mm-hmm. He said, My firstborn be killing water. Been drinking it since he was on the teeth. Mm. You ready for that? To have one on the teeth. But get your rest now. <laughs> no, nah, you got to be dedicated to breastfeeding. That's a that's a different endeavor. That's a different endeavor. That's why that ain't nigga crack joke about it. But you got to be mentally ready for that. That's a different. That's a different endeavor. Well, that's a different endeavor. But you got to be ready, especially the first three months. Well, that nigga finna be up with that tit at two to three hours. Hmm. And you got to Hmm. Some of them be ready. I'm hungry. You ain't got to fight with them. Some of them fight. Mm-hmm. Mm, you seen them, huh? You were watching too, nasty man. <laughs> Shalom, each man. That nigga said that joint like people don't be gawking because <laughs> I got the same equipment. I don't gawk. Come on, man. Say a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Mm. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and the dark sayings. Notice that he said, A man that a wise will attend unto wise counsels. And we started in Proverbs 24 when he told you, In the multitude of counselors, then you make war. But you don't cast your pearl before swine. But let's get into this second Kings, man. Let's talk about building this house, man, or repairing the house. My power. Second Kings 12. And then we get back to Chronicles. Stuff we done started already. Second Kings 12 and 1. Let it go. In the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash began to reign. In 40 years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name, Zabiah of Beersheba. And Jehoash did that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah all his days. Wherein Jehoiada, the priest, instructed him. Notice who taught this king. There was a priest teaching him. Now, if you don't know about Jehoash... Tell him what your ass name mean, man. That's given by Yahuwah. This is a man who his name means he's given by Yahuwah. Hold on. I need to check. Check his daddy. Now, this is the son of King Azaziah, or the son of King uh, Yohaz, or Azaziah, excuse, Azaziah, excuse me. Because this is a righteous king. So if this is a righteous king, Doris, what kingdom does he belong to? Shalom, Bill. If he's a righteous king, what kingdom he belong to? You can go ahead and go home. Yeah, you can go home. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's too late now. Because it's Judah and Benjamin, it's, it's the fact that you answer northern when you've been told a million and one times that the northern kingdom. Oh, what's up, Brittany? That that the northern kingdom ain't never had a righteous king. I'm offended, Doris. Oh, I can't see your photograph on now. So listen, I would test you. You failed. I need 15 push-ups. Now, to get out of your push-ups, you can uh, pass them off to somebody else for 30, but they got to answer the next question correctly. But if they get it wrong, your your push-ups triple. Listen, you can pass. I'm talking about you don't know when the next question is coming. You can pass your 15 push-ups to any person of your choice. But if they get the next question wrong, you gotta do three. You gotta do three times. Push up. What's good, uh, brother Demetri? 
Who would you like to pass your push ups oh, to? No, no, no. If he get him on, you got to do push ups? Yeah. No, if, if that, let's hear it right. If that person gets it wrong, that person don't have to do the push ups. Michael has to do three times her 15. But if that person gets it right, if they get it right, they're spared. Their push ups are eliminated. But if they get it wrong, yours triple. Basically, you can pass them off, but if they get it right, listen, 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 Doris, listen. I can pass around the room. Listen, if you get the question wrong and you pass them and that person get it right, you're both absolved. But if they get it wrong, the passer has to do triple. Deal or no deal. That's what we're planning here today, though. Would you like to pass it? You don't know. You don't know. You can pass it to whoever you like. That's an adult. That's the amazing. You got five seconds to pass, or you got to do it. She passed it to Sip. Okay. I'm going to get around on purpose. Woo! The unjustness. <laughs> Verse 4. Come on. 2 Kings 12 and 4. She said, I got confidence in him. She hard-headed. She ain't listened to him. Mm. I said, you. She hard-headed. Come on. 2 Kings 12 and 3, actually. It said, but the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. Come on. And Joash said to the priest, all, all the, the money of the what? Dedicated things. That's brought. To the house of Yahuwah. Even. The money of everyone that passed. The, the money, money. That every man is set at. All the money. That come into any man's heart. To bring. To the house of Yahuwah. Come on. Let the priest take it to every the, man. Of his acquaintance. And let him what? Repair the breaches Pause. of the house. Y'all remember what repair the breaches is, right? It's been a long time since we talked about it. Repair don't mean what you think it means. Tell him what repair is. Mm, Jessica say we knew it. Your cousin in law say, mm. <laughs> To repair is kazak. Kazak. Y'all know what kazak mean, right? <laughs> Come on. That's to strengthen, to prevail, to harden, to be strong. To I want to go to strong. I want to go to Psalms 19. What's good, Zo? Because I hadn't finished that yet. Psalms 19. Hey, whoa, whoa. Come on, we're gonna hit Psalms 19 to 7, and we're gonna hit Sunday Luke, Luke 22 to be specific. Psalms 19 to 7, listen to it. Say the law of Yahuwah perfect. It's what? Perfect. What else it do? Converting the soul. What else it do? The testimony of Yahuwah is short. What else it do? Making wise the simple. And what else? The statutes of Yahuwah are right. What else? Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure. Enlightening the eyes. I want you to pause and I want y'all to let that Brother Omar Pete, man. So I want you to let that resonate in your mind because we coming back to that, you dig? So come over here to Luke 22, man. Tell me what verse 20 says. Let me get right on that so I ain't got you on no fishing expedition. Because I think that's way too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't need verse 20. That's too much. That's too much. You can read it anyway. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Just give him verse 19. We'll move around. He said, and he took bread and gave thanks and break and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise. Also, the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new testament. And my blood, which is shed for you. But behold the hand of him that betrayed me. Come on down to verse 28. You are here it is. Verse 27 was the verse I was talking about last night. That's what I had in my mind. This one right here. Go ahead and read that for me. For whether it's greater, he that sit at me or he that serves. He said, no, it's not he that sit at me. But I am strong. I'm among you as he that serves. So you have to remember that, that man. You talking about you going to be ruler over the house? You got to rule in the fear of God and every man who rule amongst men must be just. You know what I'm talking about? And he said, I'm your Lord and master, and I'm sitting among you as him that served. That's a different type of conversation. Most people rule to be served. You know what I'm talking about? You can't be in a rulership position and move that way. Now, I'm talking about with Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? Now, outside, of, I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. You know what I'm talking about? But you wouldn't be right with the Lord in doing it. 
You know what I'm saying? If you want to rule your own house selfishly, that's your business. You can't rule the house of your hood like that, though. That's why a lot of niggas not fit for the field. You know what I'm talking about? They didn't prepare they uh they stuff without and they ain't make it fit for the field. They want to go build a house and try to rule over it. Sit your monkey behind down somewhere, funky booty little boy. You know what I'm saying? For real. Cause that's how that stuff come in at. Man, look at me telling you, man, most people want to be seen and heard. See, the internet is a blessing and a curse for the word at the same time because it allows people to have access to people that they may have not had access to otherwise, but it also allows a lot of ignorant, misinformed, wicked individuals to have a platform to speak whose mouths must be stopped, to be 100% honest with you. Because anybody with a camera or a phone could just jump on the internet and go to talk. You know what I'm saying? Just go to talk. That's why it's so much bad dope on the street. And that's why a lot of brews be like, what well, we got to do to stop this false doctrine? You can't stop. It. All you can do is put the real out there and let the people choose. We trying to make the people get down with the real. You can't make nobody get down. If a nigga get down with the fake, guess what that means? Don't y'all know in the book of Proverbs it says a, a wicked doer take heed to a lying tongue? Did you know about that? You knew that was in there? It's okay if you ain't remember. It's, 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 it's obscure. Come over here to Proverbs 17 and 9, I believe. It's always been in my mind because I ain't never forgot that verse since the first time I heard it. It's verse 4, I won't. Matter of fact, just go ahead and read verse 1. I'll work my way to it. Proverbs 17 and 1. Proverbs 17 and 1. Proverbs 17 and 1. Say better is a dry morsel and quiet therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. Mm, think about that for a second, right? He say better is a dry morsel. Tell him what a dry morsel is. You know what that is. It's better to have some hard bread in there. Y'all boys know about selling that hard bread, man. Y'all boys ain't never did that before. There's my note I'm talking about. Them boy go out there with that bread and hit it with that oil jail nigga late night. He around there looking for a dub. That boy got some bread. What's a dry morsel? Dry is bread. That's waste, desolate, dry, mm. ruined. He said it's better to have some ruined bread. And then that's a pot, that's fragment, a bit, a morsel of bread or piece. It's better to have some dry bread, he said, with what? With quietness, than a house full of sacrifices with you. Imagine you got all this contention with you, who have you been making all these sacrifices? He said, it's better for you to have next to nothing than to be able to make all these offerings and sacrifices with all that contention because you evil as hell. Because you know what he told you? The sacrifice of the wicked is a what? Abomination. It's abomination. He said, even much more when he bring it with a wicked man. Come on, sis. Say, a wise servant shall have rule over a son that caused shame. A wise servant that have rule over who? A son that caused shame. Didn't, he, didn't Paul tell you you'll be judging angels? Why a servant to have rule over a son who calls shame? What else? He shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. Paul, didn't he tell you that, hey, man, you inherit some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold? That's what a wise son will do. You know why? Because a wise son going to build his house according to the pattern thereof that I showed you in the mouth. Come on with it, sir. Said the finding pots for silver. In the furnace. For gold. But Yahuwah. Try the heart. See, he want to test you. See, see, this is the thing, right? And then go back to the thing and tell you who will try the heart. He going to give you the word and put you in life situations and then see what type of mind you got. He not going to force you to do nothing. He want to see what type of time you on. What you on, baby? How you live your life? You did? Come on. A wicked doer give heed to false lips. A wicked doer listens to liars. Go ahead. And a liar give ear to a naughty tongue. And a liar give ear. Tell him what naughty means. It ain't Santa Claus naughty now, is it? You like that? You used to wait for him. You did. You used to like to go sit on the strange white man's lap and ask for toys. I want a bicycle, Santa. I was never with that. I don't want to sit on this man's lap. I don't know this nigga. Type of grown nigga want a bunch of kids sitting in his lap all day. That's weird. But I guess when you need a paycheck, you don't give a damn. <laughs> like this here's the dog sitting in my lap, you gonna pay me at the end of the day. <laughs> I need to be stressed out. I need to do better with my life. I hate my life. Come on, man. Tell them what naughty is, man. That's a ball, a desire, a chasm, fic of destruction, engulfing ruin, calamity. Naughtiness, but perverse thing, pure wickedness, pure deep wickedness, 
pure D wickedness. Ain't that something? Read that last part of that verse again, man. He's saying a liar give ear to a naughty tongue. Liars are give ear to mouths and tongues that destroy. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. You wasn't in that cookie. You wasn't cooking, Jay Reed. <laughs> Say with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. This is why they give this is why they give here to a to a lying tongue. Because you ain't got no love for the truth. Shalom, Brother Herman. You won't lies. You did? Come on. And for this cause, Elohim shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm. But we are bound to give thanks always to Elohim for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Because Elohim had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Ruach and belief of the truth. So come on back to Luke 22, right? Pick me up in verse 28 because I got to get it moving. Mm. You are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Abba have appointed unto me, mm -hmm. that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the throne judging the twelve tribes of the Asherah. Mm. And, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Hashatan have desired you, that he may sift as wheat. But I have prayed for you that, that your faith fail not, and when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Pause. When you are what? Converted, strengthen your brethren. When you are what? Converted, strengthen your brethren. What did we just read in Psalms 19 and say? It said the law of Yahuwah convert the soul. Listen, you don't think Peter was already keeping the law before he met the Lord? So this ain't just convert now. Convert and and uh, and Psalms nineteen is shoe. Y'all know what 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 word that's usually used for, right? For repent. You know what I'm saying? But it didn't mean to turn. So then, if the law of Yahuwah turns the soul, then what is it turning the soul to? Huh? Not in this aspect. First Corinthians 15 and 45. It's going to turn your soul to something else. From a, from a living soul to a spirit that's made alive. And how did the law of Yahuwah do that? Because beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he began to expound on the things concerning himself. And he that believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Ruach HaKadosh that those that believe on him should receive. This is why you have to prepare your house, prepare without, and then make yourself fit for the field. And then you can build your house because you can build it on the foundation of the apostles. And the foundation of the apostles is the testimony of Amashiach. You know what I'm talking about? When you build your house in that fashion, you can never fail. This is why, by the grace of the Lord, we ain't never had to go back and change nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't build it. We didn't. We didn't drop doggone sand for foundation instead of concrete. You know what I'm saying? We ain't get to go to Home Depot and buy the wrong stones. We bought the right stone the first time. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to go back and redo your house, other than you want to give it some upgrades. Ain't that right? If you build your house, if a house built, see, see, like the flows in this house are terrible. You know what I'm saying? But that means the salt flow was terrible. But that also means how old this house was and how long did it sit vacant before he got it. You know what I'm saying? Because that see that that play a part in it. Because it was probably made right the first time. But you know what happens over time? You get a little wear and tear. You know what I'm saying? When you get a little wear and tear, you know what I'm saying? You got to do what? You got to come through and do what he talking about right here. You need to repair the house. It's some breaches. You know what I'm talking about? So when you look at, when he look at repair, it's kazak. That's the strength. How can you strengthen a building? You know what I'm saying? So this is not what he talking about. Isaiah 66 and 1, every favorite person's verse to misquote. Well, one of them anyway. It's quite a few. And it's funny that a lot of the most highly misquoted verses dwell in the book of Isaiah. Thus saith Yahuwah, Shamahim is my throne and the earth my footstool. Where's the house that you build unto me? Where's the place of my rest? Listen, see, that's when people say, see, he doesn't, he, he doesn't need a building. He telling you where is the temple that you build for me? Do you not realize that all the temples were built for? Let's just pause for a moment because maybe people don't think about these things. 
Do you realize that all the places of worship in antiquity were built because the people had in mind that that's where that God would live at? Why do you think that when they put the Ark of the Covenant in there with Dagon, he put him in Dagon's house? Because in their mind, that's where Dagon lived. Remember, we read it the other day, Solomon said, he said, how can the house that I build contain you? The heavens of heavens can't contain you. Now, see, this is, remember, he said, I never asked y'all to build a tabernacle for me to dwell. Because where did you who will always desire to dwell? In man. This is all Isaiah 66 is imparting to you. Not that you didn't have to build the building for a place of worship, that the place you built, he could never dwell in because he don't want the tabernacle that man pitched. He wants the tabernacle that he pitches. Did you read 1 Corinthians 15? Mm -mm. Come on, read that for me before I forget. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The second? The last Adam, a quickening ruach. See, this is, I remember, what, he, what did he tell? Now, when did Peter get converted? Let's take a look then. A little look at Acts 2 and 1. Let's look. Remember, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my what? How? So Peter is the foundational stone after him. Because Yahusha is the what? He the chief cornerstone. What that is? Psalm 116, Psalms 118? Yeah, that's Psalm 118. Eh? We look at Psalms 118 and say, La Boy. Come on, dude. La Boy. I see you, La Boy. Well, you first. say, How be it? That, uh, that was not the first one. We got to call it out. We got to call it out. That's uh, First Corinthians 15 and 46. Oh, you we already read that. that. Oh, you just need that one verse. Yeah, yeah, Psalm 118, baby. Psalm 118. You can come over here to verse uh 16. I see you, little boy. To the right hand of you who exalted, the right hand of you who will do valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of Yahuwah. Yahuwah mm. had chastened me sore, but he had not given me over unto death. He ain't he chastened me sore, but he didn't give me over to what? Over unto death. He chastened me sore, but he didn't give me over to what? Unto death. He said, as many as I love, I, I, I chasten. So be therefore zealous and do what? Repent. He said he could chasten you sore. He could give, tell him what chasten sore is, man. Because he could give you some serious and uh correction, but he ain't gonna let you die. Chasten is your sore, and then sore is your sore word. So he, he said, I'm giving you double correction. Come on with it. He said, open, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. I will praise Yahuwah. This gate of Yahuwah into which the righteousness, which the righteous shall enter. Mm -hmm. I'll praise you for you have heard me and are become my salvation. The stone the builders refused has become the head of the mm, corner. The stone the builders refused has become the head of the corner. What else there, sir? This Yahuwah is doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. Mm -hmm. This is the day which Yahuwah have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This Save is the day that what? Yahuwah have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on with it. Say now, I beseech you, O Yahuwah. O Yahuwah, I beseech you. Send now prosperity. Through he that come in the name of Yahuwah. That's good, because we read Isaiah 28 and 16 with the cornerstone. But come on with Job 38 and 1. We talk about that cornerstone being laid in heaven before it was even laid on the earth. Remember, we talk about a house that the Lord pitched and not man. This is the house you want to build. After that, John 14 and, and uh and 21 or 23. Then you who entered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Mm -hmm. Nerd up now your loins like a like a man, for I will demand of you and answer you me. Mm -hmm. Where was you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Mm -hmm. Declare if you have understanding. Declare who have laid the measures thereof, if you know, or who have stretched the line upon it. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Who laid the what? The cornerstone thereof. Who, he asking a question. Read it again, verse 6. It said, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Tell him what fastened is, man. To box, to sink, to sink into, to sink down, to pierce, to settle down, to be settled, to be planted. To be planted. What did we read the other day? In, in Revelation 21, what are the foundations of the city? 
Mm, that ain't in Revelation 21. Mm -hmm. That's an Exodus. But that's not a Revelation. That's the answer to the question. Like on Jeopardy. I'm giving you the answer. But what is the question? The question is Revelation 21. What are those 12? What did he say there's there in that city? He said, and he said, but there's a foundation. This is the foundation that he set. The pillars are the, the answer to that question. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where did them 12 foundations come from? Then he said, who set the chief cornerstone, correct? So before them foundations were set, you got to have a cornerstone before you set the foundation. You know what I'm saying? He said, where was you at with all of that? Remember, the 12 were already picked. This is for the building of his house. Now, remember, he said for the all the workers in this house in 2 Kings chapter 12, their job was to repair the breaches. What is the repair? Again, it's kazak, it's to strengthen, to give the ability to overcome. What did he tell Peter when you're converted? What he wanted him to do? Kazak your brethren. Strengthen them. How are you able to strengthen somebody? You have to be converted. How are you converted? You have to receive the Ruach. Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from Shamahim as a rushing of mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh and began to speak with other tongues as the Ruach gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Yahudim, devout men, out of every nation under Shamahim. Now this was noise abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we, are, we were born? Parthian and Medes, Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and all Judea, Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Persia and Pamphylia and Egypt and all parts of Libya about Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Yahudim, the proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of Elohim. Mm. Nah, we just ran through that door. You had to you can't sit there. This chair already ain't big enough for me. Uh, think about that, right? He received a ruach. Peter was converted. What did Peter go to doing out there in Acts 2? What did he begin to do? He began to preach the gospel to these people, did he not? He was the chief speaker out the whole play. He said, where were you with these foundations and when I set the chief cornerstone? Tell him what chief cornerstone of Job 38 and 6 means. Shalom, Brother Ernest. Corner is Panah, that's the corner. And that's going to be a chief. bit. Yeah. That's the chief stone, the, the leader, the ruler. Let's get this John 14 and 20, 23 when he gets in. Shalom, you gotta die, man. He said, Yahushua answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Abba will love him. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. Make our what with him? Our abode with he him. He's going to dwell with you. He that loves me. We ain't did this in a long time. What tribe mean dwell again? So he want to dwell with you. Remember, she said, now my husband will dwell with me. Remember, he said he got gifts for uh, for the rebellious also that Yahuwah Elohim might dwell with them. See, now come back to Isaiah 66 and 1. I'll get 2 Kings 12 because I already built it. It does say, if Yahuwah Shamahim is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? Where is the place place of my rest? For all those things have my hand made. All, all these things my what? My hand made. So you got to look at something. He's telling you, if you was to build a house for him, you ain't giving him nothing other than what he, what's his. That's why he told you in Psalms 50, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. He said, I ain't never came to you. That's why that nigga would kill him to my, your God is bloodthirsty. He requires blood. Somebody should have drunk your blood a long time ago so you'd be dead. Should have pierced you right in your throat, let you bleed out. Get that for me, man. Psalm 50 and 17. What may I do for you? Nia, muffin. Muffin, Nia. 
<clears throat> so seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you, mm. when you saw a thief, then you consented with him mm. and have been partaken with adulterers. Mm. You give your mouth to evil, your tongue frame deceit. Mm. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's You might son. have to go back to him, man. Give me 50 and 8. I will not reprove you for sacrifices on your burnout. I will burn not what? He said, I will not do what? Reprove you for your sacrifices on your burn offerings. Why? Continually before me. I will take no bullock out of your house. He said, I ain't take no bullock out of your house. Nor he goes out of your fold. Mm. For every beast of the forest, mine. Mine. The cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. I wouldn't tell you. For the world's mine and the fullness thereof. So he, that's why he's telling you, man. Come back to Isaiah 66 and 1 and read it again. That's why he's telling you that. It's not about that you ain't got to have one. He don't dwell in you. Just because you built a temple with your hands don't mean you who will dwell in it. That's all he was telling you. The same way I told you, just because you show up on the Sabbath or you show up for a feast don't mean you serve your whore. That's what he was telling you in Isaiah. Your feast days and your Sabbath, they weary me. They fool with blood. That's why he said in Amos, I don't care nothing about your Sabbath because you like when the Sabbath going to be over with so we can lay corn. When will the new moon be passed so we can do this and do that? You know what I'm saying? That's why he told in Isaiah, if you seek not to do your own pleasure, I cause you to ride upon your mount on the mountains and I will give you an inheritance. You know what I'm talking about? But I've been told you, if you go back and look a long time ago, we got some people mad when we did that one. You know what I'm saying? It is you keeping the Sabbath. And we told a nigga, most of you niggas ain't keeping the Sabbath because you ain't ceased from your own works on the other day. What does your law say? You so worried about proving a Christian wrong and you going against your own law. Because in Genesis chapter 2, when the seventh day came, what did it say? He said, and then in Exodus 31, when he told you this was a Sabbath for all your generations, he said, and he was what? refreshed. So why in the world if this man going to rest on the Sabbath in creation, I'm going to get in the grave and get up on the Sabbath. That's not a work day. You know what I'm talking about? Why is he going to start building his house on the Sabbath? He wouldn't do that on the Sabbath. Let's read that for him. It's, it relates. That's why I mentioned it. Genesis 2. I mean, what it is? Yeah, Genesis 2 and 1. Is it 2 and 1? Or is it just Genesis 1? And... Yeah, come on. Genesis 2 and 1. Thus Shamahim and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. On the seventh day, Elohim ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And Elohim broke the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he rested from all his work. Now, y'all remember all this here, right? And when the Lord was on the stake, what he said? It's finished. My work is finished. How many times he said, I finished the work that you what? Gave me to do. When your work done for the, he said, I gave man six days to labor and the Sabbath to rest. And you think this man was finna get up and go work on the Sabbath? Now go look at Exodus 31 and 12. I meant this because at this point, he getting close to getting up. You know what a problem come in at? And of course, you know this. I'm saying this really for people who on here who may not be aware of this. Christians say he got, he got killed on Friday. I don't know where they get that from. You know what I'm saying? And say he got up on Sunday. Bruce say he got killed on Wednesday and got up on Saturday. I don't know where they got that from. I know what verse they used that from, but y'all know better. So now, do we want to get have the chance for, for to, to throw that question out for Michael's push-ups? All right, Sammy. It's going down. What passage do people use to say that this man was killed on Wednesday? Mm, that boy took a sip like he was in the interrogation room. So you're going to get me a hoagie and a cigarette? I'll tell you everything you want. Mm. If not, Michael going to be strong. I don't want 45 girl push-ups either. I want military grade. Mika right here, she can show you. She knows. No, no, no. You ain't got to do them. You just got to show her the form. Okay. You ain't got to do them. I need all 45 of mine straight. You know what I'm talking about? Like some Hennessy Pardis. Like some Remy Martin Fine Champagne Cognac. I need mine straight. 
Great. Can you handle that? You look like you used to drink some rock. Great goose. No, I need all 45 straight. I, I need you to get a pump. You know what I'm saying? Blood coming through. You come in, you can look at him on, 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 on y'all wedding night. Say, what you want to do, brother? Because you help. Because <laughs> he going to have you jacked because he going to get these answers wrong. You don't like his hip. Right, brother? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Better Hulk Hogan than Macho Man. You ain't figured it out yet, Sibby? Who can help Sibby out? Sibby, you can toss it now. But now, them, now, if you pass it, she get relieved. You get her 40. Now, if that person get theirs, get it right, you are all. But if they get it wrong, you got to do 90. Do you want to pass or play? Who you pass it to? He passed it to Stanley. What passage do they use to say that the Lord died on a Wednesday? Mm, Daniel 9 and 27. <laughs> I threw out an easy one there too, man. I threw an easy one to say you. He was like this here. He was stuck. Mm, very well then. I shall. We gonna up the numbers on him. He a personal trainer. He get fifty out the gate. <laughs> fifty push up should be easy. Fifty push up should be easy for every man in here. Little Johnny, how many you can do? I think that's an honest answer. Because yeah. <laughs> that's an obscure number. I need to say 35. That sounds like, yes. That's a, he sounds like my triceps getting wobbly at about 27. I can finish them on out. Well, I need to disrespect you. How many you can do, Sid? We ain't talking about your prime. We're talking about the day. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to get, might, might able to get about 3540. Simi say he with you on the 3540. Where you at with it, Derek? Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a ring. Where you at with it, Stanley? I'm gonna get a Levi ring. Mm. Well, well, where you at with it, Will? You say 140. I'm gonna say, what? Well, that's amazing. <laughs> Where you at with it, Dwight? Where you at with it? I can understand that everybody don't really do push-ups like that. I ain't gonna lie to you. When you're doing the penitentiary push-ups, you ain't gonna do be able to do as many as you think. Because all the tension stay on your chest. Yeah, the penitentiary push ups different. I mean, you, but I mean that's different because you doing that. That's for muscle building. You trying to, man. After you've been training for a certain period of time, man, you 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 got to do push ups different, and ain't gonna do nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? Cause you ain't gonna go to failure. You know what I'm saying? But Robert, well, how many do you think you can do? I know you. You probably got out the arm and said, "Damn, a push up." <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what they think most men ought to be. I used to be able to do about a good 30 or 50. What about you, Sean? You a personal trainer. You ought to be able to do hit 50. He said 50. He said smooth 50. Mm. Well, Michael Glover, I know you're going to give me a good seven and three quarters. <laughs> you give him 50. What Monte at? How many Monte can rock out? How many of you rock out push up, Monte? Straight through. Straight through. Monte say 60 and 7. You niggas need to tighten up on your bike stroke. 
How many John did? Yeah. So I had to equip myself because I was in there. I'm like, you know what? I keep coming in here doing, you know what I'm saying? Because I was doing other work with him, just 20 to 40. It's too many in the tank. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I just had to see how many I could go before I got the failure. Especially on the deficit push up, easy hundred. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm telling you the harder ones to do feet elevated, because it seemed like it'd be more uh yeah. I can't I can't do I can do about 30 of them, but my elbows start to hurt. No. Come on, let's get to Daniel 9 and 27. Saying he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease for the overspreading of abominations he shall make desolate even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. See, many things in, in the midst of the week mean Wednesday. But when, when did Passover start, right? Day one, right? And when did he rise from the dead? Three days later, right? How long is that week? How long is Passover, I should say, as you know, is how long? Well, unleavened bread is a week. You know what I'm talking about? Passover is the first day, and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread is seven days. So when it tell you he got up in the, he caused the sacrifice and ovulation in the midst of the week, it ain't got nothing to do about when he died. It's got to deal with when he rose. His death is not the important part. It's the raising. The life wasn't in the death. The life was in the resurrection. But see, we overlooked that. So that's how you know, of course he's going to get up on the first day of the week. Why wouldn't he? Exodus 31 and 12. Mm, it's amazing. He's saying, you who is speaking to Moses, saying, speak you also unto the children of the Asherah, saying, truly my Sabbath shall you keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, Yahuwah, that do sanctify you. Let me tell you something, man. The Ruach HaKadosh is truly a sign of his Shabbat and that he sanctify you. Not just your seventh day Sabbath. It's truly a sign. So you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for this Kadash unto you. Everyone that defile it shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. Whosoever do any work therein, that soul shall be among his people. Don't you? How you going to have a Ruach HaKadash and be doing your own work in it? How you going to do that? Come on. Says six days may work be done, but in the seventh, the Shabbat of rest, Kadash shall keep the Shabbat. Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout the generations of perpetual covenant. Come on. It is a sign between me and the children of the Asherah for Shamanim and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. Tell him what refreshed. What? Yeah, he told them whoever sins you remit, they remitted. Whoever sins you retain, they retain. You think it was just the things of the world, or you think that could be? I mean, the apostle period had that type of authority, but more specifically, them. That is more so if you if you bring somebody to word, like he said, uh, if you find a man in the his ways and you convert him, you cover the multitude of sins. You know what I'm saying? Or saying if somebody hear the word and reject it, and you dust it off, you can keep your sins. I'm gone. It really more so what that is, because he done gave you the power of the word. That's not fine to take breath to refresh oneself. Notice what it said when he said he refreshed himself. It said to take breath to refresh oneself. Why would he get up on the Sabbath, man, if he rested? Took breath and he refreshed himself and he got up from his labors. See, we just look at a Sabbath as just the same way everybody do get mad. We 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 replacing what happened in Egypt with Yahushua's death. We forgetting this. And not even, man, you better pay attention to what's going on or you're going to miss the play. It's not saying that the first is bad. It's just saying the latter is greater. You can still talk about the first. And, and, and it, it, one doesn't have to diminish the other, if you would. You know what I'm talking about? It's just one that's greater. One has a greater effect. When you sitting back and you looking at the Sabbath, you ain't just supposed to look at the Sabbath as... Like most brews look at the Sabbath as this is the day I'm going to just lay in the bed and not do nothing and not work. That's not what he ordained the Sabbath for. The Sabbath was ordained for you to go get a word. That's what it was for. That was for you to have a day unencumbered of any of your own personal work wants, 
needs and desires and labors so you could learn of your God undistracted. You know what I'm talking about? He said, I gave you 144 hours to do whatever you want. I just want 24. And niggas can't give him that. He said, I just want 24. You know what I'm talking about? I just want 24. You got a hundred. I don't only mention that because you got brews who argue about can you have sex on the Sabbath? Of all the days to have sex on, why are you focused on doing it on that day? You got six whole days, man. Now you think about it. Yeah, the Sabbath flowing sounds great. Something wrong with you, boy. Your mind ain't in the right place. That means you went into the Sabbath and your mind wasn't on your hood. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even on clean. You thinking about you thinking carnally. You went into the Sabbath thinking about some yams. You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with you, boy? Well, you had day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. You could have did that. Amen, brother Herman. Just imagine this here. Mm, Derek had helped you out, too. Just imagine this here, right? If we was in the land, of course, you know what I'm saying? Just in the land. If we just had any land, period. And people say they wanted to serve you. And when I say any land, period, I'm not talking about no acres either. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about a country. Like a massive amount of land. There would be synagogues everywhere. So word would be going forth because you can read about synagogues in the New Testament, don't you? You can read about synagogues and Psalms, matter of fact. You know what I'm talking about? So you, because, and then of course you had the temple at that time. So word was going forth every day. Now we don't live in that time. You scattered amongst the heathen in a multitude of places. And let me tell you something, man. Most brews have service once a week. And y'all done heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again. Well, 52 times a year is not enough. Not, not when you starting from nothing. If we already had a strong foundation in the world, 52 times a year wouldn't be an issue. But 52 times a year is not enough. It ain't. How you gonna go from zero to a zero to ruach fifty two times a year? You know how much words you have to learn once a week. You don't get it. Why you think the people in the state that they in right now? You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, we do got a lot of churches and assemblies all across the country, but they work trash. They work is trash. I was telling about that yesterday, boy. That nigga I was telling about yesterday, boy. I'm talking about, boy, that nigga work is trash. That junk is terrible. I'm talking about it is absolutely awful. And I don't even just say, I just say that. I'm going to leave that alone. It's terrible. A lot of these boys are terrible. And, and, and you know what make it even sadder? Is that people think that these niggas nice. That's what make it sad. But nevertheless, we was in Daniel 9. Where you was before Daniel 9? Right, Genesis 2, and then before that was Isaiah 66. Yeah, read Isaiah 66 and 1 for me one more time. Oh, I, that's right. I need to be reading in 2 Kings 12 because I need to get ready to finish. I'm going to read this in 2 Kings 12, verse 5, man, civic, tell him what breaches is. Let the priest take them, every man of his acquaintance, and let them repair the breaches of the house, wheresoever any breach shall be found. What is a breach? A deck, a fissure, a rent, a breach, a leak. A leak, a separation, if you would. Remember, I said, what you say? I said, or a gap. A gap. I said 59 and 1. Say what? My arm is not shortened that it can't save, nor is my ear heavy that it can't hear, but it's your sins that have separated you from your Allahim. He also said, I looked for a man to stand in the gap, and I didn't find one. Well, not just a schism, it's a gap between man and God. And God. You know what I'm saying? So he telling these workers to strengthen the gaps in the house. Now, whose house are this? This is Yahuwah's house, and you are that house. You know what I'm saying? So the laborers that we talked about last night who building on that house or repairing that house, their job is to strengthen the, the stones of the house. Give me first uh, Peter 2 and 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom concerning as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, the chosen of Elohim, precious. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual you house. You also as what? 
a lively stone. Built up as a what? A spiritual house. To do what? A Kadash priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to so he need. just described you as that. You know, we read in Hebrews 3 the other night. He says, whose house you are. You the house. He seek to dwell in you. As we read in John 14, 23, correct? So let me read 2 Kings 12, verse 6. But it was so. The 23 year of King Yoash, the priest had not repaired the breaches of the house. Then King Yoash called for Yehoda the priest, the other priests, and said unto them, Why repair you not the breaches of the house? Now they'll receive no money of your acquaintance, but deliver it for the breaches of the house. And the priest consented to receive no money of the people, neither to repair the breaches of the house. Yehoda the priest took a chest and bore a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side. As one coming to the house of Yahuwah and the priest that kept the door put therein all the money brought into the house of Yahuwah. And it was when they saw that much money in the chest that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and they put in bags and told the money that was found in the house of Yahuwah. And they gave the money being told into the hands of them that did the work that had the oversight of the house of Yahuwah. And they laid it out to the carpenters and builders. That wrought upon the house of Yahuwah. Notice you see, tell them what oversight means. Notice you see oversight again. Now this is not focusing on the money part. It's focusing on the men who work on the house and what their job is. That's for God to attend to, to muster, to number, to reckon, to visit, to punish, to appoint. What word to, is that again? That's a God. But God, this is to watch over, to preside over, to look after, to care for, to care for the same definition you seen for rule when you were looking at what a what a what a pastor is supposed to be. They got oversight over the house, and then you say you got the carpenters and the builders. Just give them the Hebrew words for carpenters and builders, if you will. Carpenters is karas, a craftsman, an artisan, an engraver. We talk about that, a craftsman, skilled in in, in this labor. And builder is banal. That's somebody who building. What did he say? Upon this rock, I'm gonna build my house. At the end of the day, any any man who's an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, they job is to be skilled craftsmen and build that house. And that house is to be skilled and instructed the people. And he has to do that through wisdom. Then through understanding, the people can be established. Because what was what will establish them? When Yahushua taught them in Luke 24, he said he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. And that's how a man received the Ruach. See, the skill of wisdom gives you the ability to dispense the word. Understanding gives them the ability to establish the word so that the Ruach can be received. You can't have, that's why he said get wisdom, but at all you're getting wisdom without understanding and the word is fruitless. You can't get the spirit without understanding. You can serve God and keep his instructions with wisdom. But you won't get the spirit without understanding because understanding is received by faith. And most people don't get it because they don't believe. You know what I'm talking about? But when you talking about a, a carpenter, a builder, you have to be skilled in what you're doing. What they call Ezra. You remember, don't you, little Johnny? Ready scribe. Ready scribe. Skilled scribe. Every time you see somebody who's dispensed the word, it always describes them as being skilled. You know what I'm talking about? I think we neglect that severely when it, that's why I done told brothers a lot of times, the word of you who is not a scholarly endeavor, it's a skill in righteousness. Then we just read last night, if you need milk, you unskillful in the word of righteousness, it's a, it's a different level of ability. And that ability comes through the wisdom of God and you got to fear God to get that. That's what the book's saying. Okay, let me finish some more. We get out of here so y'all can eat Verse 12 of 2 Kings 12, he said, to the masons and the hewers of stone by timber, hewed stone to repair the breaches of the house of Yahuwah, for all that was laid out of the house to repair. Now, tell him what masons and hewers of stone is. That's it. What's a mason? Some people are going to hear that. See, that's how you know that the masons, see, that's the stupid stuff people do. Type of stuff make me want to find a stone and slap them in the mouth with it. Knock all their teeth out their jaw. The guard to wall up to wall up to close Slow, up to, bro. Bu to build a wall to build a wall to close up to fence up the hedge to enclose. Listen, what he said to close up a hedge to a mason or repairer. A repairer Did, didn't uh, didn't this didn't Satan say to you who about Job that he had a uh, a hedge around him that he couldn't get through? 
See, when you got the hedge around you, there's no way Satan can touch you. Remember what he said, man, the, and the wicked one touch you not. You know what I'm talking about? That's what Jude told you, didn't it? Because you don't, because because you've been strengthened, because you've been converted. Therefore, he can't touch you. You understand? See, we give Satan too much credit. You need to be looking to you. Who are we? Don't give a damn about Satan. The only people who worry about Satan is niggas who live it in their sin and want to stay in it. You know what I'm saying? But when I say they want to stay in it, they want to appear to be righteous while they dwell in it. People who seek in Yahuwah don't care about the wicked one. What can the wicked one do? I don't care about Satan. I don't care about Mr. Charlie. I don't care about man, nationality, under heaven. They can't do nothing to me. Ain't that what Psalm 27 told you? What you worry about what man can do to you? What you worry about what these people can do? These people can't do nothing to you? Man, bump them people. Man, man, feed them donuts and let them die. You know what I'm talking about? Straight up and down. Come on, man. What what what, what, what I yours is Kassab. To dig, to cleave, to divide, to hew, to make, to cut out, to dig out, cut down, to quarry, a hewer, a mason. And if he's a hewer or a cutter of stone, guess what he's doing? Because that's a bend again. He cutting up that word for you, baby. He dispensing that word to you. Listen. Why well, stop that? No, I'm trying to make sure I ain't skip over nothing. <clears throat> Now, when he say buy timber, tell him what timber is. You ever bought some timber? You ain't never bought no trees. You ain't, you ain't smoking no J. Reed. You ain't no cop J. Reed. I don't care if you don't know the rest. It's an amazing film. Phenomenal. Timbers is eight. A tree. <coughs> Listen to what he's saying, right? He told you to, he told these workers to buy timber. What you think this mean if he's telling you to buy? Man, we talk about this like that. Somebody, somebody sent me that with uh with the white man, with the white Jewish man. Who you sent me that with the white dude? Who sent me that with the white Jewish man? I can't remember. Somebody, oh, that, I think that was Yasha. Yasha sent me that with the white Jewish man. Well, he was talking about something that we didn't talk about that plenty of time. That death came by a tree, so life came by a tree. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have a hard problem dealing with that. You know what I'm saying? He telling them to buy timber. Why you need to buy timber? Because he told you to take up your stake and follow him. Pick up your tree and come after him. And you got to buy the truth and sell it not. Because if you buy that timber, then you already know what you're coming to do. You willing to buy, you willing to acquire and possess life so that you won't be separated. You know why? Because you're willing to die to your sins. You're willing to die to your flesh. You're willing to die to the world. You're willing to die to all of those things to live under Allah. That's a strong commitment. That's why those who are committed to the work have to already been committed to doing that before they even start dispensing word. You know what I'm saying? You don't get to say, I want to dispense word and you ain't even committed to serving God yet. That's retarded. But that's what a lot of dudes do, man. A lot of these dudes in the room beating they meat, get online, want to drop some word to you. Your hand's sticky, boy. Your sheet's messed up. You've been playing penis in the puppet. You know what I'm talking about? You out here cheating on your wife? You out here telling lies. You know what I'm saying? You out here beating them. See, I'm only talking about men. So I ain't talking about no woman now because ain't no woman going to get up and do that there. Man, look at man. You got niggas don't get no bread. Just sit at the house. See that do dirty house playing Madden all day. You know what I'm talking about? You know how many brews over the years I done seen say I'm a prophet of the Lord. They don't say it as much on Facebook no more. I can't work. I'm a prophet of the Lord. I got to drop these scriptures on Facebook. That's what, that's what the Lord sent you to do to type on your phone and you say you putting in the word. Whole time your drawers got a hole in them, my nigga. You got to go to your mama house to eat because ain't no food in your refrigerator. That ain't no way to live. That's the way to live, little. That ain't no way to live. Man. Now this is the thing, right? When I say this, man, I'm not talking about dudes who really laboring. Because remember, the book say it was men who wandered about, destitute, and afflicted, and the world was what? Not worthy of. That's not what these niggas doing. These niggas on clubhouse all day. But I heard them say, boy, I don't even know if some of these niggas got a job. I said, what up, boy, that why? He wasn't lying, boy. Some of them boys, I ain't talking about how some people get on there and you got your phone in your pocket or you got your phone sitting somewhere while you doing something and you just hear it. These boys be on there talking six day in the morning till six day the next morning. I'm like, do you even have a wife? Do you have kids? What in the world? He said, been hearing some of the women preachers been into some other stuff. And then I don't even care about no woman preachers. I ain't even talking about that. I don't even care about that. They ain't even valid to me. You know what I'm talking about? 
Yeah, they ain't even bad. I'm talking about a man. Well, you cannot be a preacher of the word and your life is not together. I'm not talking about no money together either. I'm not talking about together how the world defines it. I'm talking about your soul ain't together. How you going to get somebody else's soul together? Your soul ain't together. How you going to help somebody with lust and you lust every day? You know what I'm saying? How you going to help somebody out with idols in their heart and you got seven in yours? How you going to help somebody be able to tell the truth and you lie? Your life is a lie. Bump telling a lie. You live a lie. You can't do that, man. Who you going to help? That's like going to a doctor with no hands talking about you need some surgery. What are you going to do? Would you go to a doctor with no hands? Would you go to a doctor with no eyes? Would you go to a doctor who's a dumb dog who can't even bark? He's so stupid he don't even know what he's talking about. That's what the book said, didn't he? I ain't make that up. 2 Kings 12, man, verse 13. Howbeit there was not made for the house of Yahuwah bowls of silver, snuffers, basins, trumpets, any vessels of gold or vessels of silver, of the money that was brought into the house of Yahuwah. Now, Paul, we're going to deal with that. Y'all willing tomorrow. First Corinthians chapter 6. What did the Lord say, man? I mean, what did Paul say, right? He told you, just read it for him, Sylvia, because I ain't going to be able to ask him this question properly. First Corinthians 6 and 15. Said, know you not that your bodies are the members of Mashiach? Shall I then take the members of Mashiach and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. What know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. One flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one ruach, three fornication. Every sin that a man do is without the body, but he that commit fornication sin against his own body. What else? What know you not that your body is the temple of the ruach hakadosh? Hold on, he said your body is the what? The temple. Of the rock, and die. what have we been talking about? What you keep in the temple, you keep the, the, the pleasant and precious riches in the inner chamber, and you keep the vessels in there, correct? Mm -hmm. Listen to what he say. What you have of Elohim, and you are not your own, for you are brought, bought with a price. Therefore, esteem Elohim in your body and in your ruach, which are Elohim. He said you bought with a what? With a price. Listen, right? A man, the book say a man's... Uh, yeah. Dang, I'm finna pull it wrong. But read the first Peter chapter 1, man, verse 17. And if you call on the Abba, who without respect of persons judge according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning in fear. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, silver and gold. He said you weren't redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but by what? From your vain conversation. From your worthless conduct that you got from your parents. By tradition from your fathers, but with precious blood of Mashiach, as of a lamb without blemish. Now see this precious blood in the book of Proverbs, it tell you a man's ransom, a man's life is ransom is his riches. This is what it tells you. Now, I want you to think about that. Hold on, because I still said it wrong. Come over here to Proverbs 13 and 8. He said, the ransom of a man's life, his riches. Notice that it said that they needed the money to be able to build the vessels for the house. Guess what? You the snuffers, you the basins, you the silver, you the trumpet, you all of those things. You get brought into the house by the money that was bought into the house of Yahuwah. That money is his blood in order to make you meet for the master's use. Didn't we read that in Timothy? 2 Timothy 2 and 20 to be specific. 2 uh, Kings 12 and 14. But they gave that, but they uh, gave to that workman repaired therewith the house of Yahuwah. Moreover, they reckon not with the men in whose hands they delivered the money to be bestowed on workmen, but they dealt. Now, Steve, go ahead and tell them uh, what a workman.